We all gotta start somewhere, right? TV shows, movies, comics, hell, even video games. They've got a lengthy process of development. You gotta make sure that you have the right idea, the right team behind it, the right vision, everything. But you can't just start a project going all gung-ho and expect it to be good. No, you gotta test the waters first. You gotta make sure that you don't crash and burn without testing. This applies to everything. And yes, even Sonic. And yes, even Sonic 2. The development of Sonic games are always interesting. You can't help but wonder what's going on there. What's been left behind? How did this turn into this? Sonic 2 was a really interesting and ambitious game. Maybe too ambitious. Development of the game took only a year. As soon as Sonic 1 was out the door, Sonic 2 was already in early stages. And still, they really couldn't complete all the ideas that they had in mind. So today, we're going to take a deeper look at some Sonic 2 prototypes. Two to be exact. The classic Nick Arcade prototype and the Simon Wild prototype. We're going to start with the one that showed up on TV. The Nick Arcade prototype. I say Nick Arcade slowly because I feel like saying it quickly would get me cancelled. Nick Arcade was an American children's show that aired in Nickelodeon in 1992. It only lasted a year, but hell, seeing how we're talking about it almost 30 years later, it's undeniable that it left an impact. And it left one indeed, as it was one, if not the first time Sonic 2 was seen publicly. This particular demo showed up at least in two episodes of Nick Arcade. The most well-known episode was actually horribly played by this girl. <laughs> Come on, how'd you get a hit like that? These kids aren't random kids though. They are Melissa Joan Hart and Jason Simpler. The stars of Clarissa Explains It All, a sitcom that ran from 91 to 94. Joan Hart was also the main character in the highly successful Sabrina the Teenage Witch show. And the main character in, uh, God's Not Dead too. Alright, enough deviation, let's go back to the beta. So, Sonic 2 Nick Arcade Prototype, as it is called. The first thing you'll notice is, of course, the now iconic beta title screen. I swear to god, this screen is actually kind of more popular than the final one. The second first thing you'll notice is that this is Emerald Hill, but it's playing the Starlight music. It's actually not too shocking, the same song played during the Nick Arcade episode. Okay, she grabbed some rings, she lost the rings. This is the stage that Melissa played in that one episode and... Come on, how'd you get a hit like that? God damn it, Melissa. You might not recognize this bad Nick, and that's because he was actually cut and replaced by Monkey. Sonic looks pretty close to his final design, but the walking and running animation are noticeably different than in the final build. The game physics also feel closer to Sonic 1. You actually go slower sometimes, with speed and jumping caps that activate as soon as you press the forward button. Also, the spin dash was introduced in this game, but it seems like it was still a bit raw. You can only charge it once, and the speed is nothing to write home about. The spikes also work a bit weird as well. Once you get hit, you lose all your rings, that's simple, that's normal. But when you get hit again with no rings, you get hurt, but don't actually? This might be some leftover code for that bullshit behavior of the spikes in Sonic 1. There's also these weird ass checkpoints. Ah, so flashy. I gotta say, you don't really go too fast in this pro- What the f- Getting rid of this absolutely useless and bullshit mechanic was the best decision the team made. Once you complete a pretty odd Emerald Hill, you're greeted by this horrifying thing. Ugh. Act 2 is just as weird and unnatural as Act 1. The Robotnik fight triggers kinda like normal. Sonic's behavior when attacking it's kinda weak, though. Um, Ekman? Oh, there it is. After you beat him, he slowly flies away and then... Let's be honest, did you really expect anything different? This is in the end, however. With the power of the level select code, we will explore the rest of this game. Oh, hey, look at this. This menu looks a lot like the one from Sonic 1. Oh, hey, this stage looks a lot like that one from Sonic 1. Wait a second. Welcome to Green Hill in Sonic 2. It's Green Hill, but everything is awful. The jumbled code, the unstable collisions, this must be what it feels to play Sonic 1 and have a stroke at the same time. You can barely move without dying, you just go through the floor every time there's a slope or a loop. Your safest bet is just to keep jumping until you reach the end. Jesus, this feels like a corruption, like even the enemies just turn into glitched abominations. Most of the times you just get stuck in the floor trying to wiggle your way out of the grasps of hell. At the end of this nightmare, we find a Robotnik that just screams put me down, oh god, just put me down. After we mercy kill him, we move on to... Ooh, a Sonic 2 stage in my Sonic 2? Uh-huh. Chemical Plant is pretty unfinished, but the most noticeable change is this 
different background color. The zone has no enemies and nothing works. Not the boosters, not the tubes, not the stage. Let's move on. Alrighty, Spring Yard Zone, here we go. <laughs> what do we have here? Yep, this prototype included the iconic Hidden Palace. Everything that you know and love is here. The dinosaur, the bats, the unfinished stage, just like you remembered. Except the music. So to God, this team is distancing itself from Hidden Palace with each discovery. Nothing really new to see here. It's the same unfinished stage we've seen in countless other videos. But I can't help but wonder, this stage, Emerald Hill and later Hilltop were in this prototype. So they work on Hidden Palace really early on. Can't help but wonder, after developing all the other stages, why was Hidden Palace cut? Labyrinth Zone! Huh, well, this looks more like finished Hidden Palace. This color scheme tells me that it's random tiles from Chemical Plant. It's completely unplayable and you only fall to your death. I spoiled this before, but Hilltop. I'm guessing this zone was also developed early, since it uses a lot of assets from Emerald Hill. Again, no enemies in this zone. Nothing gonna hurt you. Not even the lava. Still pretty bare bones, but it has the right idea when it comes to Hilltop. Until it doesn't know what to do anymore. Yeah, you eventually reach a point where the game straight up crashes. Same with Act 2. Act 3 though, <laughs> yeah, we've seen this before. Final zone, you start, you crash, you switch the game and that's all. This prototype is pretty fascinating. You can clearly see that Sonic 2 was built on top of Sonic 1. The amount of leftover data and stages is pretty blatant. Sega really wanted to start hyping up the game, only finishing Emerald Hill and already shipping it to game shows and shit. This prototype was found and acquired by the owner of the Hidden Palace website and legendary chat DRX. The game was sold to him for $1500, which was paid thanks to a community effort. He dumped the contents of the holographic card in November 7, 2006. But you know what else happened in 2006? The 8th anniversary of the Simon Way prototype discovery! Okay, I gotta work better on segways. In some cold corner of the internet in Asia in 1998, a young lad by the name of Simon Way stumbled across a GeoCity site that had a Sonic the Hedgehog 2 ROM. But something was off. The game looked unfinished. After Simon shared this odd game with some of the western sites, he came to the realization that the game he downloaded was actually a prototype. There's another accounts of the data from this card showing up before and after Simon Way shared it. But there's nothing really definitive. Juji Naka himself said that the card was probably stolen during a toy show in 1992. On with the game, again, the awesome title screen. Man, next time I play Sonic 2, I'm just going to feel lost without this screen. No messing around, I'm going straight to the level select and start our journey. First thing to notice is that this prototype is actually much more advanced than the Nick Arcade one but still mostly unfinished. Sonic animation is still the same as in the show, the initial snail enemy is still here. Not gonna lie, not a lot is going on with this zone. Since it was almost all completed in the Nick Arcade prototype, it's only natural that it's almost complete here too. Now we jump to another infamous unused stage, Wood Zone. I love this minuscule stage, I just love seeing stuff that we were never meant to see in games. The song used in this stage is a weird early version of Metropolis. Sadly, you can't really get too far. The zone is almost nothing, just a few inches and you're stuck. There's a conveyor belt of Bob that does... nothing. Neat! What isn't neat is Act 2, though. Moving on. Metropolis, one of the best stages to hate. Nothing too crazy about this one, but one major thing to mention are these weird blocks that act as either an elevator or a crusher. The collision is pretty glitchy, so they don't actually crush the player. Sometimes. Move on to Hilltop. The lava hurts, you know. Hidden Palace once again. Strangely enough, there's close to no progress in this build with it. The only noticeable thing is that they added this Master Emerald here. That's it. Oh, and they changed the song to the one that plays in the 2013 re-release. <sighs> I miss Sound Test 10. Oil Ocean is next, and there's really not much to talk about here. Yeah, sadly most all of the zones are kind of like this, unfinished but with little changes. In this instance, there's these balls that you can activate with a switch. They don't actually do anything, they only kind of act like the balls from the first Sonic prototype. Mystic Cave doesn't have the spike spit and that's all I need. Casino, oh 
god! Well, finally some change. Look at this mess. I know it must be some sprites and tiles missing up, but... God! Almost everything from this zone was changed, and I cannot blame him. Of course, we can't really know what this... thing had in store for us, since all of these unfinished levels were... that... unfinished. No badniks, objects, or obstacles. Chemical plants offers nothing new. Only some of the tubes working now. But that's about it. Oh, here we go, boys. Genocide City, the infamous level with the infamous name. And what do you know? It's nothing. In both acts, you just fall to your death. And that's it. I guess with the amount of deaths in this stage, it just had to be called Genocide City. Neo Green Hill, holy shit, they planned this almost 10 years before advance. It's just aquatic ruin. Damn it! Well, there you go. Nothing exciting to finish this off. Uh, maybe special stage? Well, that's all I can muster with these protos. Both have an interesting story and really show the various stages of Sonic 2, what was kept and what was removed. Some stages like Wood Zone, Hidden Palace, and other never-made stages like Dust Hill still inspired ideas for future Sonic games. The community held these stages and prototypes close to their hearts, and how couldn't you? They are part of Sonic 2, they helped shape what would become one of the most memorable games ever. And for that, these prototypes will forever be part of history. Till the next time, stay safe, boys.